Well, hello everyone, welcome back. December 26th, 2025. We're down to just a couple days left in the year. And that means that for 2026, this machine needs to be making some cuts, making some chips, and that means we need to get it up and running. So, little update on the shop as of right now. Got some power run, got a heater in here because it's Utah and it's gonna be cold. And also, hopefully got my lighting issue figured out. The lights in the last two videos have been flickering. I even had the guy, I, I had a couple friends hit me up that are in the film industry. They're like, hey, what camera are you using? What's your frame rate? Uh, Possum Solutions was cool. He reached out to me and said, hey, I work in the film industry, try these different settings. I think it was just the lights. We will certainly find out when we go to edit this video. A little status update on the Okuma. Shop's in good shape. It's time to get the Okuma running. I was able to do a single tool change like two weeks ago. Haven't had time to mess around with it since then. Today, I wanna go through, I wanna do some tool changes, and then I'm gonna pull all the way covers, I'm gonna pull all the bellows, and I'm gonna go through this machine and clean it. I'm gonna put new fluid in it, we're gonna put the grease on all the ways and the ball screws, and just really try and get this machine in good shape so that I can just go in 2026. As a little reward to myself for getting this in here and up and running, we're gonna do some tool changes of all things. I've never had a swing arm tool changer. I've always had just like an umbrella, you know, that came in, spun around, stuck it back in. So having a swing arm tool changer is just like a new thing for me and I'm super excited about it. I've also never had a belt that has 48 tool pots in it. Gonna cycle the belt around, gonna show you guys some tool changes quick. One other thing we're gonna do today, I have a status beacon that I found up here inside of this box. It was hiding, I didn't even know it was in there. So we're gonna install the status beacon and see if it'll work. I need to put it on top of the control cabinet, but hey, I have a status beacon and I've never had one before and I'm super stoked about it. Like, not everybody has a status beacon, okay people? So I'm excited to install my status beacon and get it working. We've got a little bit of sketchy electrical here. I don't think there's any issues with any of this stuff other than just these wire connectors. I don't want to get shocked, but I think we're okay to start the machine up. Nothing that's critical has been affected. Just need to make sure that like my door switch is all good here and everything. This will be the first power up since running the non-temporary power here. Here we go. Good. Looks like I wired it right. That's always a uh, huge win. Never wanna hit the control on button and see sparks. Let's do some tool changes. Here's kind of what we're looking at here. This door on the Okuma has this crazy metal belt system. I don't know, I don't know if they make them different now, but in this Okuma, in this MU400, Look at it all, it's this like crazy intricate pulley system. You've got a pneumatic piston here, sucks itself in, and then it rides and pulls this pulley up this little cylinder here. So the door lifts up vertically, tool belt moves into place, kicks out the tools on both sides of the one that's being changed out in the pot. So these tools and these tools move out of the way backwards and that's how the tool change is performed. So one thing that's kind of awesome that I didn't realize is the pull stud for the Okuma is the same as my Mazak HTC 400. So I can use my Cat 40 pull studs from my Mazak on the Okuma, which will be super nice. I was, I was okay with buying a bunch of pull studs, but this will give me three or four tools that I can slide in and out of here and do some tool changes and just mess around with this thing for a little bit. Took me the better part of an afternoon messing around with the control, messing around with the door interlock conditions, all of these different things. Um, needless to say, it's pretty complicated. It's kind of tough to figure out, but I think I got it. We get a tool into the spindle. We come onto this tool selection page. And we're gonna say that we want to uh, change to tool number three. Come in here, type in tool 003. 
It likes two zeros before the tool number. Put it into the control, hit OK. Interlock and then one cycle start button. Interlock release, cycle start, and the rapid override has to be like at least on 50%. And away we go. So the door drops. The tool moves over to the swing arm. And we do a tool change. Door comes back up, we're good to go. Let's do another one. Let's see if we can speed it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn up the rapid override and we're just gonna go faster and faster and see how fast of a tool change we can do. That was 70%. Let's bump it up to 80% rapid override. Here's 80% override, here we go. That's pretty quick. That's faster than my Cincinnati by like 10 seconds. <laughs> Legitimately, like I don't think I'll ever get tired of this. Okay, 100% rapid override. Let's see how fast this thing will do a tool change. I'm gonna take X all the way over to the right side. All right, 100% rapid override, here we go. Let's change the tool again. Here goes nothing. That's pretty quick. Woo! All right, well, I figured out how to make the tool changer work, figured out how to change some tools. I need to figure out how to set their offsets and their lengths and diameters, but We'll call that a win for the day. The tool change door, I sprayed a little bit of WD-40 on there and got that cable loosened up. Before I did that, it was kind of like binding on the way up and it's opening and closing really smoothly now. So that's super encouraging. All right, check it out. Caught that sucker in here. Gonna plug these in together and we will have a status beacon. Pretty easy. And we'll just put this box back up where it goes. And we'll have a status beacon on our Okuma. Man, this thing fits together awkwardly. Some of these bolts or some of these screws go under. Some of them go over the sheet metal. There's like no real rhyme or reason to any of it. All right, that. We can put a check mark as completed. Box is back on. The hunt for the DNC cable continues. If you have one of these and you know where the DNC cable is, or if it's one of those ports in the back, let me know because right now I don't know where it's at. Look at how good it looks. Just chilling up there. Look at that. That's a proper machine tool. Also, this is what I think is the DNC connection right here. Don't know what this is. One of these must be the DNC connection. I don't see any other ports or anything like that. It looks like communication. Yeah, well, it's been a very productive day. I'm pretty happy with it. I have mixed up one of these sprayers like you'd spray Roundup with. And I'm just spraying a little bit of industrial degreaser on some of the really, really bad spots. I'm gonna let it sit for probably at least a day or two, kind of try and break down that gunk that's really caked on. And then I'll come back with another tank of just water rinse it off, scrape it off, and then rag a lot of it out. I would really love to pressure wash this in here, but I just don't want to run the risk of getting water into any of these components like the encoders or anything like that. I just really don't want to screw something up trying to clean it. So I'm going to go really light on the degreaser and try and do a lot of it with rags. 
that's about it for today. Thanks for being here. Kind of a fun update. Next time, we'll probably finish cleaning this up and then swap out the fluids. By that point, we'll be ready to rip. And like I said, this is probably gonna take me, I don't know, a couple weeks. I have some family stuff going on, so that'll be taking my time. But I'm excited to get this thing going, get some chips running, and really just kind of doll this old girl up, get her back into working order. Thanks for being here. Check out the other videos on the channel if you're into golf stuff. I have a ton of golf content. Lots of other machine stuff from my other machine projects, my horizontal and my vertical machine that I did retrofits on. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here if you're new. And I will see you next time. Take care.